It was January of 2009, and I was in Houston, Texas, with a group of young evangelists, and the Lord was really encouraging. A number of young high school students had put their trust in the Lord, and the work was going well. I had heard about another gospel team down in McAllen, Texas, down on the Mexico border, and we made contact with them and decided to take them some funds to encourage them in the work they were doing. We met halfway between, and after we had a very good time of fellowship, my friend and I, Jerry, we jumped in my GMC pickup truck and we headed north. Before we left town, we pulled into a large service station on the highway. I pulled into the truck section with the high roof to the diesel pumps because it was a diesel truck and I filled up. Well, I just got out onto the highway and I knew we were in deep trouble. The truck was heaving and coughing and sputtering. And so we limped into the first town, which was Victoria, Texas, and I found my way to the GMC dealer. It wasn't too long with a little sniff test that the manager and, uh, and the mechanic told me that yes, we had filled up our diesel truck with gasoline. When they calculated the cost, it was $500 for each of eight injectors and another $1,000 for dropping the fuel tank, draining it, flushing the engine, changing the oil, etc., etc., etc. And when I called my insurance company, they said, look, it was your mistake and we're not going to pay for it. I told this to the manager and he said, you need a different insurance company. So anyway, as we were leaving, uh, my friend Jerry gave the manager and the mechanic a gospel CD. We had to rent a car. I took Jerry back to Houston and I returned the next afternoon when they said the vehicle would be ready around five o'clock. And uh, when I pulled in, I discovered that the manager had found a way to give me a one-time goodwill guarantee in which he had diminished my bill from over $5,000 to $1,200. As we talked about it, I thought there's something up here. He seemed different in his conversation with me. And he said, it's just about closing time. He said, I, I, I understand it was you on speaking on that CD, yes? Um, I, I've got some questions. Would you mind if we stepped outside for a minute? So we stepped outside and he said, actually, I just have one question. Is it possible for me to know for sure that I'm saved, as you say? I said, well, the Bible says it is possible. He said, well, you know, I was raised in a church, naming the denomination. He said, I was raised in a church and we were very faithful in attending. But he said, when my daughter became a teenager, she got into drugs and uh, nobody in the church seemed to care. But a fellow at work who was a different denomination, he, he cared for me and helped me through that time. And he said, I'm wondering, like, does it matter what denomination you belong to? And I said, well, now, you gave me a bottle of the sample of the fuel that you took out of my tank to take back to the insurance company. That's right, he said. I said, what if we put a label on that bottle that said pure diesel fuel? What would that mean? And he smiled and said it wouldn't mean anything at all because it's not diesel fuel. I said, that's right. It's not the label. It's what's inside that counts. And if we have Christ in our hearts, that's what counts. And so I quoted to him the words of John 5 and 24. I said, Martin, take this verse as if God is speaking directly to you. This is his promise. Jesus is speaking, and he says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, 
but has passed from death into life. Now I had a few other verses I wanted to quote him, but he was in a hurry to get saved, and he just bowed his head right there and began to talk to the Lord. And he said, the Lord, you knew I needed this, and I want you to save me, just like this verse says. I believe your word, I believe in Christ, and I want you to save me. So the question is, how much is a soul worth? Is it worth $5,000? Is it worth $1,200? I would say so. I was very happy to have had that detour to meet Martin. No surprise that the dealership was called Victory GMC. <laughs> and I thought, how appropriate. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Well, as it turned out, God is no man's debtor. And when I got home, the insurance company repented, and they paid my bill <laughs> as well. So just a little reminder that sometimes, as the poem says, disappointment, his appointment, change one letter, then I see. And sometimes what seems to be a detour, a distraction, a disappointment, is actually God working to provide an opportunity for us to share the good news with some hungry and needy soul.